What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here, and I want to show you in this quick video how I cut out basketball nets. So I have two photos here that I'm gonna show you. One is a more traditional photo with this dark background that you might see at any sort of arena. And this one is an outside shot that's slightly different, but still has a plain background. Now both of these are actually kind of similar as we have some contrast between the net and the background, and there's nothing in the background that's too complicated. This one doesn't have much behind it, this one doesn't have much behind it either. Some photos you can use some of these um, features and techniques for, but some you might have to go in and do a little bit more manual depending on what's behind the net. But I'm gonna show you how I would cut this net out and how I would cut this net out. So first let's start with this net. So this has a specific color in the background. So I'm gonna use a technique using the select color color range. So if we go up to select, we go to color range, you can see I have a bunch of stuff selected here already. But what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we have sampled colors and localized colored clusters selected. And then we can use this eyedropper tool and you can see when we select, it's selecting clusters of that color. So if I select the orange in the hoop, you can see it's selecting the orange in the hoop. So I'm gonna select the sky, and then I want to select the plus eyedropper tool. And then I'm just gonna click a whole bunch up in the sky area, up all around and down where the sky is. And you can see in our selection here, we have anything that's white is gonna be part of the selection, anything that's black isn't. So you can see we've got a pretty good selection here. Now you can play with the fuzziness. So you see if we increase the fuzziness, it's selecting some of the background here. We don't want that. So we want to lower the fuzziness. So I had it on like 17. Let's just do 15. It's a nice round number. And then you can change the range. And this is going to affect when you select items or when you select the colors. Uh, but if we lower it, you can see it's getting rid of some of the side here. I want to just do range at 100%. So I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm actually going to invert the selection by holding down Shift Option and hitting I, and then we can mask this, and if we just make a new layer, and I don't know, let's just fill it, let me grab my foreground color here, let's just fill it with green. You can see we have it cut out. Now you can select this by holding Option and clicking on the selection. And you can see we've got a little speck up here. So what I can do is I can just take a brush, make it a little bit bigger, select the mask. I can just paint up here. Oops, we're painting in white. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure it's black. And then we'll get rid of that one speck up there. And then we can go down here and get rid of these down there. Now there are a couple spots in here that still need to be tweaked. You can see it's pretty fuzzy in here, which might not matter depending on what kind of background you're putting it on. If you're putting it on a light colored background, you probably wouldn't notice it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna to go to adjustments, hue and saturation layer. I'm gonna select cyan and I'm gonna decrease the cyan all the way down to zero and the same with blue. And then I'm going to apply it to that layer. So now you can see it's blending everything in. It's getting rid of the color cast that we would have from the sky so you could use this in a more universal fashion. Now one thing I might want to do is hold down the option key to select the selection and then use the selected mask and go in and do some global refinements in here. So this is where I might go in and I might use the refine edge brush to get some of these gaps in here just so we can get rid of these selections. So anything that's pink isn't going to be selected. Now you gotta be careful when you do this because you might click on an area that you don't want. Like here, it's getting rid of this spot, but I really just wanna get rid of the spots around this orange. Like this big line here that we didn't get, I wanna get rid of. And there's a couple different ways you can refine this. I'm just gonna go in with a quick refine edge here. I'm gonna click around the top here to select it. You could do like a um, select contract one pixel. You can do a filter minimum to get rid of it, but I'm gonna use it this way. I'm actually gonna select the brush and I'm gonna brush back in just a little of this. So it's an actual curve because we don't wanna get rid of the actual realistic curviness of it. We just wanna get rid of some of these 
some of this fringe. So we can click here, get rid of the fringe, click in here as well. I'm trying to actually avoid the net because I think it's going to think the net is part of the background that we don't want. So we can get rid of this, get rid of this. Right there, it's a little bit of a trouble area. Same here, same with here. But you can go in and refine it as much as you want. I'm gonna back back out. Um, I'm gonna smooth this just a little bit more and then I'm gonna hit okay. And now if we zoom in, um, let me delete the layer mask with this, everything still selected and then mask it again. And you can see those areas are much better. There's still some areas that we need to go back in and fix. But you can see just in a couple minutes, we've we've clipped this out. Um, you can again go to with the um, selection or the mask selected, go to filter other minimum at one pixel. You can hit enter and you can see it will contract everything a little bit or you can select this, select modify contract one pixel. And then you can invert the selection and then delete it. And then we have this nicely cut out backboard background that we can use for anything we want. So that's one method. That's using a color range if you have a specific color. It works well if you're outside, specifically for a photo just like this. Now for this photo, we're gonna do a slightly different method. I'm gonna duplicate the layer. Um, what we want to do, and actually I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. So this way this is this can be applied to smart objects, which is good. We're gonna do it to a smart object here as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a fill in the background of just a color that's not black. So we can see that this is actually working. So fill in a background, however you wish. And then we're gonna duplicate this a couple times. And I'm gonna get rid of this. So first things first is we're gonna, we're gonna make a selection of this net area. So what, this way, since this is a dark background, what we can do instead of using color range is we can double click and use the blend if layer style. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell Photoshop to hide the layer, anything that's dark. So I'm gonna hold down the option key and drag over this and you can see it's cutting out most of the background. And that's doing it with this sort of blending from this area, but I'm gonna drag the right slider over and you can see we got rid of most of the background, which is great, that's what we wanted. I mean, we can zoom in and you can play around with the sliders. You don't wanna to go too far because you can see you're gonna get rid of parts of the net that are just darker. So we wanna make sure we maintain those, but we also want to have it blend in well. Now you can also just go in and do this and we can just paint these little areas back in later. So that's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna hit okay. So we have the net part cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna mask the net now and I'm gonna go in and I'm going to just erase parts that I don't want. Now this isn't 100% necessary and I'll show you why, but I also want to mask out this area here. So you can see in here we've got this messy area that we want to fix. So I'm just gonna go in with a brush and I'm gonna fix this. Now I could probably go in, yeah, use the selected mask and just click in these areas. So that's a faster way of doing it. So we'll do that. And then we went in here and in here and in here. Oh, see I clicked over there, but I want the net to be not selected. Let me just hit Command Z a couple times. Okay, so with this selected, we can go in and we can be a little more loosey goosey now with the selection because it's not going to, or with the erasing because it's not going to select the net. So we can go in here and we can get rid of everything that we don't want. And we don't have to worry about this stuff up here because we're going to cover that up anyway with the rim. So we'll go like this, go in here, erase some of this. So as you can see, if you have a photo that has a black background and not like this uh, random you know, doorway highlight, it's incredibly easy to cut out. Let's get this little guy here. 
So you can go in, spend as much time as you want refining that. But we have the net cut out, which is the hardest part to cut out, really. So there, we've got the net, that looks good. What we can do now is we can turn this top layer back on. And I'm just gonna use a general select subject, which did not select any of this because it's black and dark with the background. So select subject, we don't need the basketball. You can select the basketball if you want, but I'm going to select and mask. I'm gonna use the refine edge brush, which is not gonna look good here, it might. That's not too bad, but that's not what we want. So I'm gonna use the brush tool and I'm just gonna make a nice round edge for the backboard, that's good. I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm gonna cut this out. Let's see if we can use this. If you hold down the option key and use this quick select tool up here, you can still use quick select and erase some of these areas. So I want to erase the inside of this, which I can do manually, which is not a big deal because it's not that big of an area. So we can take the time to manually do some of these selections instead of having Photoshop do all the work. But what we're doing essentially is we're going to cut out the rest of it. And then we're just going to layer these on top of each other. So we have one cut out of the net. We have one cut out of the rim and backboard without the net and then them combined together makes one full net and one full rim. So we've got all this stuff down here. You know, we can play, you know, fix this edge here. For this example, it's not incredibly important, but you know, just make sure this stuff's smooth and looks good. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna mask that. So we have that selection. I'm actually gonna group this together. And then I'm going to mask out this area and this way I can mess up this area and it doesn't affect the mask we had to select the other stuff. So if I go up here, I can go back in and fix it, but I can click down here and it's not affecting and painting it back in there. So I'm just gonna loosely go here. Again, you know, if, if you're using this, spend as much time as you want to actually make this look perfect. But basically we can, we can just go around the bottom part of the rim here with this brush like this and then we have our net masked out from the rim I'm gonna just do this real quickly so I can show you the final result go back in you know mask this out however you wish if you want to use the pen tool in this area if you want to use the polygonal lasso tool, that's fine. But as you can see here, you know, this is a trouble area. Like this looks bad because that was from the quick select, but we can go back in and fix it. Oh, this area we do not want. Is this coming from this area? No, this is coming from this. So we don't want that. So I can just color over this whole area because it's underneath this area anyway. So we'll go like that. There you go, there is another masked area. Now you can go in here and refine some of this. You can see it still has this fringe, which we don't want. Um, we can fix that. How can we fix that? Let me, let me see if this is gonna work. I don't think this is gonna work. It is. So what you can do is you can duplicate all the layers and convert it to a smart object. And then you have this selection here like we had in the other image. So then we can do, you know, select, modify, contract. We can contract one pixel and mask that area. And then we have our net masked out. And there are these trouble areas I mentioned. So what we can do is we can just turn on the first layer, the normal full image, invert the mask completely and then just go in and paint back in these areas. And you can just take a little bit of time to do this. Um, again, if this is gonna be on a background that's dark, it might not matter. You know, if we, if we change this background to be, you know, dark gray, you know, can you really tell that that's not supposed to look that way? No, because it's on a black background. 
Um, so if you, you do this, you can put it on a black background. Maybe you put, you know, if it's completely black, you won't notice. If it's white, let's see what this looks like. Looks pretty good on white. You know, people aren't gonna be zoomed in like this on your graphic, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, but I think that looks pretty good for the amount of time that we spent on it. So we've got two different ways that you can mask out a uh, basketball net without, you know, spending six years going in and cutting out all of these areas. Those are the two ways that I would probably do this using the blend if selections um, with the layer styles and then using the color range if you have a solid color behind your background. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If you have any suggestions for other tutorials you want to see, let me know anytime. Um, and other than that, just make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.